Building a Stuart 504 Boiler Plant, Part 7 Completing the Baseboard and Making the Steam Manifold The baseboard is very routine, it's a very simple job to do and you get super glue all over your fingers. Super glue of course is called cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue because people get confused with this. And quite a lot of viewers have told me I should use other kinds of adhesives but I like this. I spend quite a lot of time picking the residue off my fingers and this gives me some source of entertainment on cold winter nights. In this video I'm actually finishing off the baseboard. I've fully veneered the top and it's really set very well. Every plank is firmly stuck down. So all I have to do now is stick some mahogany around the edge. And because of the width of the baseboard plus the top planks, I have to cut the mahogany to size from a larger piece. This clip shows me using some masking tape to hold the mahogany strip in place on the side. And as far as masking tape goes, this green stuff is very good. I can't remember what it's called. I bought it when I was decorating an upstairs bedroom. And this variant of masking tape really does stick much better than the normal stuff that I use. In this clip I'm applying some cyanoacrylate adhesive to the other side. By the way this is not a repeat of the previous sequence, this is definitely the other side and you're not having a deja vu. And once again the mahogany strip is secured to the edge using this superb green masking tape. After leaving sufficient time for the cyanoacrylate adhesive to set, it's time to fit the other two side pieces. And I'm doing these slightly differently. I can't stand the board up on its end because if you notice, the edges of the mahogany stick out. So what I'm doing is I'm applying the cyanoacrylate adhesive to the mahogany itself. And here I'm sticking the strip in place between the other two pieces of mahogany. This strip is precisely the right length. If it's too long, it's going to push the other two edges out. And I almost forgot to apply some adhesive to the corners like this. But I haven't forgotten now. It's very important to make sure that these mahogany strips are firmly stuck down, particularly around the outside edge of the board. You will notice in this clip that I'm moving the mahogany strip up and down, and this is to ensure that I have complete coverage of the adhesive on both the mahogany strip and the baseboard edge itself. Once again, I'm using some masking tape to hold the strip in place. And here's one I prepared earlier. I don't normally do this, I show almost every part of the operation, but sticking yet another piece of mahogany around the edge would probably have pushed me over the edge. Veneering these engine and boiler mounting bases would be very simple if I just used one sheet of mahogany, but it wouldn't look so good. I like the floorboard effect and it looks quite good when it's varnished, but before I can varnish it I need to sand it down and before I can sand it down I need to let the adhesive set. So I'm going to move on to the next topic. This is the main steam tap on the boiler, but I need more steam outlets than just one. I need one for the injector, and I need a couple for maybe a couple of steam engines. So I need to make a steam manifold, which I'm going to make out of this square piece of brass, and the other piece of brass will form the column that it sits on. In this video, I'm only going to show the making of the manifold. I'm going to save the column until the next video. The job starts by marking out the part and cutting it to the right size. And for the physical size of this piece of brass, I think 3 inches is about right for the length. So I'm marking it out here at 3 inches, but in reality, when I cut it, I'm going to cut it slightly larger than that to allow for some machining. Here's my trusty old bandsaw, making short work of this piece of brass. And you'll be pleased to know that this video is running at the actual speed. Normally I often speed up machining and cutting operations, but with this new blade it's cutting through the brass so fast I don't need to. Cutting like a knife through butter. The next thing to look at is a question of scale. How long should the column be? How high should the manifold be held above the baseboard? And I really don't know, this sort of looks okay. Obviously the column part will need turning down to be the same diameter as the thickness of the turret. But as I said earlier, that's in the next video. And in the next video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a feature about turning ornamental columns. But for now, I'm going to concentrate on the manifold. I'm marking the top of the manifold with a felt tip pen, so that when I scribe the lines on it, I'll be able to see the lines very clearly. To be perfectly honest, I'm only doing this for the video, because I can generally see the lines okay, but the camera sees them better against a black background. 
Over now to the larger of my two lathes, and this one's fitted with a four-jaw self-centering chuck, quite a large four-jaw self-centering chuck as well. That squeaking noise at the beginning is the belt. I need to change the drive belt from the motor to the lathe, and one day I'll find the time to pull the lathe out and do that. I've been stalling for quite a while, because this lathe weighs over half a tonne, but currently it's working fine. It just makes a funny noise when I engage the clutch when it's cold. The first job when making the manifold is to turn the ends of it round. The fact that the manifold is square in the first place is not possibly the best scale type design, but it's a convenient way of making the manifold. But if all of it was square, then it would look terrible. I'm going through the usual procedure of first of all using a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, to drill all the way down through this component. Now I can't do it in one go, nor do I want to. If I was using a twist drill like this one, and by the way, this one is only a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill. If I was using this to drill all the way through, at the other end it would probably have wandered a little bit. So it's a good idea to drill halfway in from one end, and then turn it round in the chuck and drill in from the other end. I then put the manifold in the drilling machine, drill three holes in it, tapping size for 5 16 by 32, when I was three quarters of the way through the tapping operation, I realised that this manifold was hopelessly overscale. And this reminded me of the bird tables my father used to make. They were suitable for pterodactyls and elephants to land on, not just small garden birds. So, it's back to the drawing board. We all make mistakes, said the Dalek climbing off the dustbin. This time I'm going to get it right. I've selected a smaller piece of brass, and this one is half an inch square, and it's much more in keeping and definitely more in scale with the steam plant that I'm building. A Stuart 504 boiler only has a three and a half inch diameter barrel, and whichever other components I put on the plant, that's the size of the boiler. So the steam manifold needs to be this size, not like the previous one. This one's going to be much better, and when it's all finished, you will see what I mean. I'm repeating the process that you've already seen, so I'm going to speed it up and get through it quickly. First of all, I'm using a centre drill to accurately pilot the holes, followed by a tapping size twist drill for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, which is 9 30 seconds of an inch, and then using a tap, I thread the holes. I then repeat the process for the other two holes. In this clip, you will see that I'm using a paintbrush to remove the swarf. It's good to keep the work clean, particularly before you tap it, because if the hole is already full of swarf, you won't get to the bottom of it with the tap. And here comes the third hole, again removing the swarf. Now that's been threaded, using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. And now it's back over to the lathe to show you my felt tip pen. And you may be wondering, why is he showing us a felt tip pen? It's a very nice felt tip pen, but what's the point? Well, the point is, it's really useful for making a mark on a drill bit when you don't want it to go too far into the hole. It's far quicker than setting up a depth stop because all you have to do is feed the drill into the hole you want to drill just up to the line made by the felt tip pen, then it's done. And the reason for doing this, well, at each end of the manifold, I need to fit a plug. The plug is going to be a quarter by 40 threads per inch, but the problem is that if I'd have used a tapping size drill all the way through, suitable for quarter by 40 threads per inch, the centre hole would have been too big, and the three holes that are threaded 5 16 by 32 threads per inch would have insufficient threads to support and seal the taps that are going to be fitted in the holes. The next job is to drill all the way through the centre hole with a tapping size drill for 5 16 by 32, then bash the part on the bench to remove all the swarf followed by threading the part all the way through. Normally I would start off a threading operation where it's important that the thread is at right angles to the work in the drilling machine. I would drill the hole then feed in the tap manually in the drill chuck, but there's no need to do it this way because the thread is already there from the other side. All I have to do is use that as a guide and go all the way through. This last operation is a very important and very useful operation. I'm making a very shallow hole in the underneath part of the manifold. And for this, I'm using an end mill. I'm not using a slot drill. They can be a little bit violent and dance about, particularly in this drilling machine, which is not the best drilling machine in the world. 
An alternative is to use one of these. This is called a D-bit. The reason I didn't use it immediately was I'm aware that not everyone has these. And these are really useful for drilling holes that need a flat bottom. It's fairly obvious why it's called a D-bit. It looks like a letter D if you look at it end on. Here's the finished manifold. I'm just illustrating in this clip how important it is that the holes are in the correct position relative to each other. If they're too close, then you will not be able to screw the taps in position. The best thing to do before you start is to lay everything out on the bench and do what could be called a dry run. I can't really give dimensions on this one because it depends on which kind of steam taps you're going to be using. So that's the steam manifold made. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.